You love Python but don't know anything about Docker or Kubernetes? In this video, I show you how to get started with these two technologies to write really portable code that runs anywhere without you needing to know anything about them. In the first part, I'll show you how to get started with your very own portable developer environment that will allow you to share your workbench of tools with anyone else. And then in part two, I'll show you how to take your Python application, wrap it up, and package it into a container that will run on our very own Kubernetes cluster. And because every good programmer knows to write tests to ensure their application is running the way it should, I'll show you how to get started with some example tests that will run automatically in the background as we iterate on our application. Kubernetes itself is what's called a container orchestrator or scheduler. And that's just a fancy way of saying that Kubernetes knows how to take our application that's packaged in this container and scale it up from one or two to thousands. We're also going to make use of another kind of container called a development container, which is a way of packaging up our tools instead of our application, so the tools that we use to build our application, and put it into a container so then we can share that container with, let's say, a colleague or a collaborator on our project, and we'll know that they'll be using the exact same set of tools that we are. We're going to need three tools to power this environment. Those are our text editor, VS Code, which also has some fancy integrations to enable us to write those containers without needing to know about them. We also want Docker Desktop, which is the engine that powers both our Kubernetes cluster and our containers. And finally, we're going to install Garden, which will empower us to stay inside our little code cave and have our tests run automatically, have our containers rebuild automatically. Basically, we won't have to think about anything else but the code as we're writing it. I won't show you how to install either Docker Desktop or VS Code because they're very popular tools. There's a good chance you already have them running on your machine, but I will include links in the show notes for how to get those installed. I will, however, show you how to install Garden. You'll also want to make sure that you flip that toggle in inside Docker Desktop for your Kubernetes cluster to on. And if you're a Windows user, it's going to be really important that you're running the Windows subsystem for Linux, links in the show notes, and that you've enabled Docker Desktop for your Linux distribution inside the Windows subsystem for Linux. That is likely to already be set, but just in case, I thought I should mention it. You'll start by opening up a terminal, pasting in this curl command, which I'll put in the show notes. You'll see some pixel art and a message that Garden has been installed. Now, if you try and run Garden immediately after, you'll see this message that the command hasn't been found. That's because your operating system doesn't know where to find Garden. So we'll need to uh, copy and paste this export command that the Garden CLI spits out. And now if we run garden hyphen hyphen version, we can see that indeed garden has been found. If you want to make this permanent and you likely will, um, then you're going to want to make sure to put this in your either your bash run commands file or your Z shell run commands file. These are going to be the two most popular shells. If you're running Mac OS, it's likely that you're running the Z shell and for Linux and Windows subsystem users, it's going to be bash. Here I've opened VS Code. If you're a WSL user, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you come down here to the bottom left and click open a remote window and then new WSL window. This will ensure that you start your editor session within your Linux environment. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna clone the example code and we do that by pressing Control shift p This will be Command-Shift-P if you're on Mac OS. And we'll type git clone. I'm going to re provide the repository URL here. And place it in a demo folder. And 
and tap open. You'll see a pop-up that says folder contains a dev container configuration file. Click reopen in container to have it launch our developer environment. Here I've opened the logs as our dev container builds to show you what's happening behind the scenes. Our dev container is a container image, just like any other container image, except that it has a special dev container.json file, which uh, shows our extensions. And you can see I have uh, Docker, Kubernetes, Python, and PyLance extensions bundled, so you'll get those. Um, as soon as you reopen the test code. And it also contains VS Code settings, like your linting settings, and our Python base image, which uh, includes our Python runtime version. Here's our really simple Python application that returns hello world. We also have a whiskey.py file that runs the same application without the debug flag. In order to turn this bunch of code into a container image, we're going to need to generate what's called a Docker file, which provides instructions for building a container image. We'll do that by invoking the command palette with control or command shift P and typing in Docker, add Docker files to workspace. We'll select Python Flask, and our entry point will be whiskey.py. Our port will be 5000. We will not include optional Docker files. And in just a second, you'll have your generated Docker file. And surprise, that's basically it. You have everything you need for building your container. And because we've installed Garden, we're actually going to use Garden to package up and deploy this container file that was just generated for us automatically without us needing to know anything more about Kubernetes clusters or containers. To do that, enter the directory containing our code and type garden create module skip comments. And the reason why we do it this way is because Garden, by default, wants to create a lot of boilerplate code. We select a module type, which is container. Garden's already found our Docker file. And we set the module name. We can just accept defaults here. Great, so now we have our new module config. And this configuration is enough to build the container. But if we want to deploy our Python code as a container in our local Kubernetes cluster, which we do, then we'll need to add a services key that includes the name of our service, which we'll call front end, a list of the ports that it exposes, 5000, and a name which we'll call HTTP. There's also an ingress listed here, which we'll want to define so that we have access to curling the endpoints, uh, basically making sure that we can get a hello world out when we call it. There's one last step before we can deploy our project with Garden, and that is to create a top level project file with Garden Create Project. We'll use the same flag, skip comments, and we'll accept all defaults. There's only a project name. So if we navigate to project.garden.yaml, which has been created, you can see that it's also a very small file with a default environment name, and this provider points to our local Kubernetes. So we're all ready to go. If we type in garden deploy, it will deploy our Python app to our local Kubernetes cluster, containerized, rebuilt if anything has changed in our code base, 
but in this case it hasn't. I've deployed this application before and it will provide an ingress endpoint for us that we can click and you can see here's my hello world return. Do you remember those tests I mentioned at the beginning of the video? That test is going to be under the test subfolder, test underscore hello dot pi. And this is a really simple test that looks for hello world returned from app dot pi. So as long as this says hello world, we should expect that test to pass. In VS Code, it's really easy to configure tests. Just open the command palette and press configure tests, then go down to PyTest, and we need to give it the directory of our test folder. Once we've done that, we go into the tests icon here, and you can see at the top here, it's found our tests and we can expand or we can just run all tests and these should return green. But that's not the best way to run our tests because you're gonna to have to run those tests every time you make a change manually. And we just really want those tests to get out of our way while we're lost in the miracle of coding. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new key in our garden.yaml file that is called tests. And it has the name of the test here. We're gonna call it a unit test because it's testing an isolated piece of code. And the argument is just going to run the command for our tests, which is PyTest. PyTest knows how to intelligently find our tests. Anything, any test that starts with test underscore will be found and run. Let's go ahead and run this test now. We'll go into our terminal and write garden test. And garden will run this test. You can see it rebuilds the container. It's running our unit tests and these should complete pretty quickly in 4.4 seconds. What's very cool is that if we run garden test again, then garden already knows that this test is run. It's cached that test. So it won't run the test again. That is some minimal gains over our VS code strategy, but it's not the whole story. Okay, let me show you what I consider the killer feature of Garden. That's called dev mode. And this has as its source app, target forward slash app, forward slash app. Let me explain this a little bit of quirkiness later, but essentially what dev mode allows you to do is work on a running container. So you can swap files in and out as you wish. So if we go into Docker file here, this is the Docker file that was generated for us, remember by VS Code that we did earlier. Now this has as its work directory forward slash app, which gives us the funny pathing in our dev mode path. And that's the reason for that is it because it copies the source into the new root of our container, which is forward slash app. So since our directory containing our Python code has app, it's going to be forward slash app app. Now you might want to change this later, but we are cooking with fire. Let me show you something else that I think uh, you might be interested in if you're following this, which is writing in this command will allow us to override the entry point of our container. So what I'm doing here is I'm running our Flask development server. We're using gunicorn for production and I'm giving it the path of our app. Remember the funny pathing app.py and we will give it the debug flag. The reason why we do that is because it will actually uh, give us an error message to our browser if um, an error is detected. And we will run this with host equals 0.0.0.0. The same as our entry point in our Docker file. And the reason why we do that is because that's what's required to escape the confines of the container. Not escape, but essentially to present itself out um, as an accessible endpoint outside the container. Now, if we then run garden deploy 
hyphen hyphen dev, then this is going to monitor our code environment. So we can just continue writing our code and our code will sync, our Python code will sync to the container as we write. So we don't need to think about containerizing the app. We don't need to think about deploying a new image. We are always running production-like containers and we're always working in a production-like environment, which is pretty cool. So let's check our now our ingress endpoint. And you can see here's hello world. Well, let me show you something here. If we go into app.py and we change this to, let's say, hello muffin, right? Then if we refresh this, Okay, so I actually made a mistake here, and hopefully my mistake is your gain, which is that the, this command must be an array. So what I've done here is I've wrapped it in an array, and now it should just work. So if I refresh this page, we can see it's Hello Muffin. If I change it back to Hello World and refresh, Hello World. That's everything you need to know about dev mode. And it's my favorite feature. Okay, so what have we built? We've built a workbench of tools and an app that can be shared to absolutely anyone anywhere or any Kubernetes cluster. We've also written some auto running cache tests and our containers automatically rebuild as our code changes so that we can only test what has been changed as it's being changed and it's all running on a production-like environment, our Kubernetes cluster. And that skips a lot of the headache of using something like Docker Compose for your development environment, because even though you're running containers, Docker Compose is still different from running your app on a Kubernetes cluster in production. If you're interested in more of this kind of content in the future, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. My name is Tao Hansen. I'm a developer advocate right here at Garden, and it's been an honor to make this video for you. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.